Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy to this nice Monday morning. It's Monday. It's a new week. Probably new opportunities and probably some big ones as well as Bitcoin. Major warning. Bitcoin about to explode. No, is it going to explode to the upside or the downside? Are we busting up or are we flip-flopping down? Um, <laughs> no, uh, I do want to say in a more sincere tone, yeah, there are a few things of great interest on the higher-term timeframes that are starting to morph into relevancy. And then I do want to start things up. Uh, uh, off on this particular analysis with the short-term time frames, uh, back it up with some stats as to where things are most likely to go in the in the more you know uh, short term here. Other than that, I think it's time for me to jump right on into it. So let's start off right over here, right here, right now with the hourly time frame on the HPDR indicator. Basically, we do see another setup emerging right here. Um, so in this case, we do see many closures below the bottom side of the blue 50% of historic returns range lows starting right here. That is at the time where we can go and start to cross-reference a decline in volatility, which officially happens on the moving average right here, that white portion, as you can see, alongside, again, closures below. So that happens on this particular um, uh, closure right here. And at that point, we can then go and reference these stats, which do suggest that, statistically speaking, an upside move is more likely outside of the current range um, than a downside move. I do want to say at the outset that uh, it, it does appear to me that things probably do come back down and at least test somewhere around the current lows. Um, but ultimately, as long as Bitcoin is closing above that wick low that we do see from the early morning hours, at least over here in Dubai um, at 3 a.m., uh, which is 23,830 uh, on an hourly time frame, I do look at this as a lot more likely, at least statistically speaking, for this one to play out with an upside fashion. Out of 50 past iterations, 36 played out with a nice upside move in the short term, giving it a 72% strike rate. So as always, 72%, not the same thing as 100%, um, but uh, but at the end of the day, it does have a higher probability for an upside move here outside of the range. Again, that, that, would, essentially, whoops, uh, that would essentially imply uh, that it does trade further north before taking out this level over here, if it's going to take it out at all. Um, so other than that, uh, in the very, very short term, again, you know, Bitcoin come very easily back down to like 24, 250, and it, it doesn't mean all that much. Um, so with that in mind, these stats also do point towards an average return of about 220. In this case, that would be to the upside movement. But just as we always say with the eight, with these, uh, with these setups, um, understanding where these sort of, uh, failure points are in this case, that was that bottom side of the wick. Um, you know, we can also come up with what the average return would be expected uh, to the downside, which would be about 240. Again, first standard deviation calculations right here for the win side and for the losing side. Again, that would be up and down respectively. Uh, but going back into it from that closure, if we were to add 220 or about 2%, um, that would put Bitcoin back at around 25,000 uh, bucks. So what is that essentially saying? It's, it's saying that Bitcoin's more likely to trade back somewhere around 25,000 um, bucks before taking out that wick low over here. Now, if we do see that wick low taken out, uh, then at that point, we're probably looking at a much greater pullback um, down to the mid, like actually, sorry, the low 23s, uh, somewhere between about 23.1 to, to 23.2 region, uh, which I do th still think is actually uh, relevant to be aware of right now. As we'll go um, forwards, we can see on the four hour time frame, the current ranges are going to be loading. There we go. It's going to be on a four hour closing basis, right around 24,000 bucks to the downside versus the top side at about 25,4 on a four hour closing basis with the median right around 24,7 uh, and change. Um, so that would imply that a closure below this region. And then yes, we're probably going to see a move. Hey, what do you know? Uh, down to like 23,2, which is directly in alignment with those, uh, with the failure stats there. Um, and if we do see a closure above the median, Probably going to see at least a, a retest of 25. And then the real question is on a four hour time frame, do we see a closure above 25 for right here? If that happens, I'd be looking for the next uh, continuation move to the upside, another thousand dollars likely, um, somewhere around the top side of the 80% of historic returns range highs at about 26,400 or so. Um, if we also go over here to the daily, I think that plays rather nicely with the daily ranges. Let me just pop it back up here. Elsa's coughing in the background, but she's actually pretty much fine now, so it's all good. Or I think she's mostly fine. Who knows? Who knows what's actually going on? She says, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I love the comments that surround that as well, man. There's uh, some of you guys are some uh, clever motherfuckers. Uh, but yeah, uh, on the daily, um, the ranges of relevancy would be again to the downside. Same thing as yesterday. You know, basically uh, 23. So if we do see a breakdown in Bitcoin, 23 is kind of like around the the area that I'd be looking for, uh, towards. And if we do see a breakout above the median of of historical returns, um, that would be about basically 25,000 bucks again looking somewhere uh into like the mid maybe deep 26s so still nothing's really changed right there but those would be the areas of resolution as far as i can see it and in the shorter term stats do suggest that bitcoin's more likely to try the upside um than the downside although personally speaking again i would not be surprised at all to see bitcoin come back down and test around low 24s and then hey if you see a break below there well that's going to negate the setups that we just spoke about, um, and the stats will be in favor of the downside. Uh, we can go now and reference stochastic momentum and see where the current pivots are. Hourly stochastic momentum on CME will turn actually down with a closure below 24,450. Right now, trading about 100 bucks above that particular uh, pivot. Four hour time frame is also going to be turning down below about that same level, 24,480. Uh, um, again, currently still above it, but I would say that this is a little bit of a weaker one, which is why I do think that the short-term downside uh, is still relevant. Uh, Six-hour time frame is going to be also pivoted to the upside as long as Bitcoin's above 24,350. So you can see a lot of these pivots are coming in the same region. So as long as Bitcoin stays above that on a closing basis, well, fair enough. You know, upside, uh, I still suppose, is more likely before any significant downside. Um, on the shorter term time frames. Anyways, moving on into the 12 hour now, we can see this one is uh, still vertical here and will re will be remaining with upside pressure as long as Bitcoin's above where? If you guessed 24, 420, you're right. You're exactly right. Um, so we can see all of these pivots coming in around the same region. Daily time frame is currently pivoted at 21,800. Uh, so not super relevant for right now, uh, but does still suggest that higher term time frames are upside pressured here. So. Uh, so ultimately, um, do keep in mind where those pivots are. If Bitcoin starts to lose them, downside in the short term, very likely gets explored. If it doesn't, then onwards and forwards, I guess. Uh, anyways, moving on now into, I think the last portion of this analysis, I want to keep this one yet on the shorter side, um, would be this. So I wanted to follow up on the five-day Gaussian channel over here. We closed this, or not we, <laughs> it's like it automatically closed last night, being that what is a five-day time frame, and it did not close above the median. Um, now, I think perhaps I did not do the best job of explaining uh, the relevancy of that because I did get a couple of messages um, overnight saying, Crown, Bitcoin closed below the median Gaussian channel. It's dumping to 20,000, right? It's like, no, that's not the correct interpretation. It just means that the opportunity um, uh, for rejection here is still available. Personally speaking, uh, you can see that the median band has actually come significantly down now, is, uh, is, is hanging below... Yeah, it's, it's it's like right around about 24,000 bucks and you can see that thus far you know bitcoin's kind of grabbed onto it um that would imply that uh hey you know as long as bitcoin's above it especially on this particular closure what's going to be easier this week you know upside is still more likely here uh again um and uh and if it can actually close above it by end of week or sorry not end of week but uh friday this is when the next closure will be yeah um well at that point i'd say you know upper 27s is still in air like it's 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 a it's a realistic target um in the following weeks uh, again it's probably not gonna be in a straight line they're gonna be pulled back especially on the lower term time frames but ultimately i'd be looking somewhere around there uh, again you know if you're not familiar with this particular indicator basically Basically, what you need to know about it is that anytime that it has turned red and then traded below the red zone, as you can see over here in 2018, I think it's a perfect example, and then crawled its way back into the red zone, typically plays be between the bottom side and the median for a while, putting in a long-term continuation, or sorry, consolidation there. Um, rejections at the median typically get or beget uh, retests around the low end of that band. But as you can see right here, once you get that bust in action back above the median band, it usually gets a free ride, or it always has gotten a free ride to the top side of the band, the top side of the Gaussian channel. Uh, same thing over here, same thing over here, same thing over here. Um, and in three out of four cases, it just marched on to you know significantly new highs. So I do think that that is relevant um, for this particular one, especially as intro week, as long as it's trading above basically 24, you know, the path least resistance is going to be to the upside. Um, so uh, so fair enough. Uh, that would also imply that 24000 bucks is a big pivot now 
on higher term timeframes. So that'd be not just the daily as we looked at on the HPDR, but also on the five day as well. And here's the, here's the other thing. So the, so the weekly timeframe, less tested, less, uh, less interesting in my opinion, um, because there's just not as many iterations. Uh, I, I do think that it is worthwhile to call out that we did get our first closure. Or did we get it? Did we close it into the bottom side? Uh, no, we did not close it into the bottom side, but as you can see, uh, again, brushing up right against it. Uh, if you do want to be bearish, this is the exact place you'd be looking for a rejection from. If you want to be bullish, well, you, all you need to see is continuation from here, basically. Uh, but I just don't, you know, what, what does that essentially mean in a more in a more relatable way? Um, well, if Bitcoin if Bitcoin fails to get rejected here, basically, uh, I just don't see any any realistic reason to be bearish on a higher term time frame basis. Not that I really have been, you know, uh, for for the last couple months, uh, basically going back to late November, early December. Um, but this would kind of solidify it on an even higher term time frame schedule um, and likely beget a move somewhere around the median band, which is uh, upper 29s basically right now. So uh, so that kind of set in the more uh, the direction to the upside more long term, given an area of interest there. Again, probably not going to move in a straight line. If it were to happen, there's going to be pullbacks along the way, obviously. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, that would be kind of the the uh, the next sort of area of interest, as I've been saying. Um, other than that, is there anything else that I want to get into on this particular video? Um, yeah, maybe not. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Again, short term, you notice a playback down to the bottom side of the range, like 24, 250, or even 24, that's fine. I uh, just don't want to see, for the blue law's sake, any closures, um, even on a four hour time frame below about 24 at that point. I'd be looking for Bitcoin to tumble uh, further. And, and from there, that's when I think bears are going to have a little bit more of a say. But ultimately, in the higher term time frames, you know, there's not really anything. Um, I, you know, I don't look at this chart as uh, like inherently bearish as long as Bitcoin's above that last higher low, which is 21.7 or so on a daily closing basis. Um, so, you know, fair enough. Uh, anyways, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video. As always, uh, I'd like to show Bybit. They got a actually pretty damn good promotion going on. 0% on maker fees for derivative contract orders um, with the link in the description below. I believe it's only available with that particular link. Um, <laughs> You know, obviously going to be a little bit valuable if you're more active trader, but definitely read the fine print on it because it might not be for you. I, I can't make that decision for you, um, nor should you just blindly jump into something like that. Other than that, I want to be, as always, wish you the best, the best. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully soon.